Hello there, Ray here, and what you see behind me is a simple copper farm that you can use with looting 3 while being AFK. I specifically designed this to be simple to build up in your survival world and to be somewhat early game. The way that works is in 1.17, if you kill a drowned, there's a chance that it will drop a copper ingot upon death. Now in order to get this, you do need to have the drowned being killed by player means. This means either by your own sword or you can use stuff like dogs, thorns, potions, and other things which considered as player kill. And I went all out with this farm, making so you can not only get the copper from Ave King, but you can also get the looting effect applied to these guys. So instead of getting a gold ingot, now you will get a copper ingot, and there's normally a 5% chance. But if you use looting 3, then it's an 8% chance, which makes it a lot more likely to get copper ingots. So the player just AFKs here, holding the looting sword, and the drowns are killed by player means by having the player wear some thorns enchanted armor. This will do damage back to the drowns when they try to hurt the player. I've designed a ton of different farms over the years where the player can get looting while being AFK. Some use dogs, some use thorns, some use shields, some use potions, some use projectiles like snowballs. So if you'd like to see those videos, make sure to check out my playlist going over all the different types of simple farms in the game of Minecraft. Now in this farm here, the way I get the drowns is similar to some of my other drown farms from the past. I actually designed four different other farms, so if you're looking for other types, check out those. But this one has to do with a zombie spawner. You can find these down inside of dungeons, and by having zombies sit in water being submerged in their head for 30 seconds, will allow them to convert into drowns after 15 seconds. These drowns do not have tridents, but they do still have that chance of dropping copper ingots. Try to make this farm as early game as possible. The most expensive thing are the mob spawner here. Also need soul sand from the nether. You need some minor redstone including hoppers. You also need a cobweb which you can get from a mine shaft using normal shears. It also costs two dripstone which you can get from a dripstone cave. It does need a looting sword. It can be any type including a gold looting three sword that you got off of a pigman. It also uses a turtle egg which you can get using silk touch after breeding two turtles with seagrass and they lay egg on the beach. But the most expensive thing needed for this farm is to have some armor or pieces of armor that have thorns three on them. It doesn't have to be the right armor it can just be diamond you can even try iron if you want to but the thorns armor is important now this entire farm surrounds this spawner so you have to find a dungeon spawner then you want to clear out two blocks above it four blocks on each side of it and you also want to clear out two blocks below it put in water on the back side so it's all washing them over here where the water stops you want to drop down two blocks place in water and have it drop down into an area like this now this is where we have the zombies go from the water stream into our bubble column. And the way I get them to go in there is I have a little wall here which makes them step up a little bit. And this kind of transitions them into the bubble columns. I also have a block removed from this side of the bubble columns. That way the water at the very bottom will have a slight flow going back in that direction. So if a zombie would just barely touch this water, it's going to pull them all the way in. This way you can easily transition mobs into this bubble column without having any extra sitting right here. Bubble Calma is full of sources which you can put in with ice or using kelp to convert flowing water. And there is 19 blocks of water in this entire column here. Very top here we have a trap door which is on the top side of this block and you'll see when it opens up it will flip downwards allowing any mobs that are underneath of it to clip through it and move up into the next section. This is a way to kind of clump mobs together and then put them through this drowning process. So you'll see this is going to open up, let them go up here and then up in this area they will now be sitting there for exactly 30 seconds. After that time is up we are going to open up this trapdoor and by that time they will all be ready to convert to drowns. This is all done by using this little hopper clock over here and I actually got the entire system to work just using one hopper clock using a really weird mechanic that I just came up with which I didn't really think would work but actually does which is by putting different size items inside of here you can get different strengths of redstone coming out here which can be used to actually put two timers inside of one. So typically a hopper clock like this would only be able to kind of send out one signal but by doing this I can actually send out two different times using one hopper clock. 
kind of complicated to explain, but it actually works really good. So essentially I have one timer over here, which lasts for 30 seconds. And then I open this trap door right here for about five seconds, let them wash out. I guess the way to kind of explain the way that it works is that all the items inside the hopper clock are all considered one item. So they move from side to side the exact same speed, no matter how many can fit per a stack. But the actual signal that comes out as comparator can change depending on how big the stack is. So what I wanted to do is I wanted the signal strength to quickly come over to here and then quickly leave this trap door. That way this was only open for five seconds. So by putting a item at the very end of that is bigger than these items, as snowballs only stack to 16 or these stack to 64, these items will come in at the very end and quickly make the signal strength reach that and turn it on. And then when it's time to leave, these items will leave, but it does kind of equal out over time. I had to kind of do some trial and error. There's other ways of doing it too. You can put in these full items too to get the same results. Alternative way is just to have two clocks or put a little bit of delay in here before activating the second device. The reason why there is composters on top of these hoppers is to reduce the lag by these guys checking for entities to pick up above them. So I compacted it all down here so we just got one main hopper clock here. We also got power going to this trap door and then when this thing turns off it'll also flick this trap door for a short period of time and then once they are ready to drop the water back there we'll kind of push them this direction and this open up and we give them like five seconds to kind of move out and this gives them plenty of time. Sometimes you get one guy that sits back there but will eventually get shoved out over time. These guys sit up here are also within the 24 block range around the player mean that they will not despawn so you don't have to worry about losing these guys by them sitting up here and we did try other ways of getting the zombies to convert and then be transported to the player but remember drowns do act differently in daytime versus nighttime and because of this some methods that might work in like nighttime won't work in daytime and then they will fall down here we have some cobwebs because besides the 30 seconds of being drowned we also need them to have up to 15 seconds of conversion and that's what this cobweb here is for after they go through the cobwebs there is 12 blocks of air before they come down here and fall onto these two dripstone pieces now the way that the game puts a dripstone in is a little bit random like flowers how it sits with inside of the block you can see this piece here sits more to the left and this one sits more to the left and back in the corner because of this there is a chance that a baby drown will kind of fall to the side and won't take the full damage of the dripstone if you don't know any mob that falls on it has their fall damage doubled this allows us to drop them from a shorter distance and do enough damage to get them low health. So if a baby would happen to have more health, it's not a big deal. The player will still kill it. Now we tried up a lot of different ways to try to get babies inside of here and slow them down through the water using cobwebs, but it wasn't as consistent as using our hopper claw. Now because the babies are shorter, meaning that they leave the cobweb sooner than the adults, their feet technically leave higher up than the adults as well. So when they fall down, they can die. So if you want them to survive that, all you have to do is move down the cobweb one block lower and that way they will survive the fall and, and it won't lose out from the loot from the 5% that are babies. So this system is baby safe. Sometimes you also get some chicken jockeys come through, which by the time they come down here, it'll just be a chicken. So if you have an extra chicken in here, that's where it came from. Those guys won't produce eggs because they are considered a jockey. Once they land down here, they will have about two health, but you really can't get them lower easily because they have armor. That prevents them from getting typically down to the one health that most mobs would be at. That's okay because they will eventually make their way from on top of the dripstone. They'll try to walk towards these turtle egg over here. Now it is important that you have two blocks of air above this turtle egg. Otherwise, the drowns won't see it as a target that they can go after. And I think they can walk through these trap doors. Instead, they'll walk into this water, and if you don't know, drowns need to be inside of water before they will try to attack targets. And once they do end up getting pushed into the water, only then will they decide to attack the player, because the player is also in water. And then the thorns effect will be applied to the drown at a percentage. There is a common misconception that I see in my videos when I show the trick that you can actually have fox hold looting three. People thought that these foxes were considered a player's pet and therefore you can get player specific loot from it, which is not the case. So having a fox holding a looting three sword, even if it is friendly towards a player, will not give you player specific loot such as copper. But you can use it like I showed in my other videos how you can get, you can get the looting effect applied to chickens that attacks. And also having a dog kill the drown while the player is holding a looting doesn't work. The way that looting works is that the player has to be holding it in his main hand and 
The final damage that kills the mob has to be considered to be coming from the player. So a dog killing the drowned isn't considered coming from the player. But stuff like potions, projectiles, and thorns is. Now each level of the thorns enchanted armor has a 15% chance of doing damage back towards the mob that attacks the player. So with level 3 there's a 45% chance and then with 4 different pieces all with level 3 there is about a 90% chance that it will do damage back. Now there is an insanely small chance that doesn't matter how many times the drown attacks a player the thorns won't have a chance of hitting the drown back meaning that the player could die but you'd have to like run this for like a million years to see that. But what typically happens is that the drown hits the player does some damage back and do up to four damage so within one or two hits it will kill it and then it will have that chance of dropping the copper ingot at an eight percent chance. Plus it also can drop any armor it's wearing and it has the looting effect applied to the rotten flesh. Now we're actually using the rotten flesh as a food source. In most of my farms I would have like a chicken farm to resupply the player with hunger because that is the main way that the player dies is that he doesn't regenerate his health and then he eventually runs out of hunger bars and dies. So here's a view from my alt account and you can see that we have the rotten flesh in the offhand and whenever his hunger gets low enough he'll eat it. This will increase his hunger which will let him do the natural regen and then his hearts will eventually go back up again and because the drowns come through fairly slowly they don't like overwhelm the player and kill him. And the hunger effect from the rotten flesh actually helps bring the hunger back down again allowing the player to eat more than what he normally would be able to allowing him to constantly regen. So I don't need to have any like cooked chicken farm or any other food source or regen beacon or anything like that to keep the player alive. Now the drowns do kind of come in these batches. The player's health can get a little bit low, but it always regenerates before the next batch comes as you do have 30 seconds. And every time the drowns died, that rot flesh is resupplying the player's offhand, so he's never running out of it. And since he already has a stack in the offhand, it'll just go back into that stack and fill it back up again. Now this can even be done on hard difficulty where if your hunger goes all the way down to zero the player will actually die and regen beacon will not actually be able to keep up with that type of damage. So by me coming up with this really cool trick allows us to avoid having to make any more complicated food resupplying system. Now the loot that comes off these guys gets picked up by the hopper and gets put down into this chest here. You can see all the ingots, a lot of rotten flesh because of looting. You also get some of their armor pieces because of the looting effect and because it's a player kill. They do have a chance of even getting diamond gear while being afk. I ran this farm for about 20 hours and never had the player die once even on hard difficulty. Every time a mob takes damage from the thorns it's going to do twice as much damage towards one of the armor pieces. Because of this the armor degrades really fast. Now you can see the armor takes some damage but the xps that come off of the drowns are going to repair the armor. This is because it all has the mending enchantment. Now before 1.16 there was a problem that when xps would come to a player it sometimes go into to his XP bar rather than going to mend the armor. Now this has now been fixed, so it is possible to wear more pieces of armor with thorns without having to worry about them breaking. Now if one of the pieces break, let's say the boots break, it will actually mean that the last three pieces will have a very small chance of breaking. Because the less pieces there is, there's less areas for the XPs to go to to mend them. So even with three pieces, you can make this work. Now having protection helps the player from dying, as these guys do do some damage. Some breaking helps prevent the thorns from doing so much damage when it does take durability. And of course the thorns are important to do damage back. Now the way that mending applies the durability back onto armor just chooses a random piece and because of this it's possible for it to keep choosing the same piece and for one of the pieces to break but it's also very unlikely. So the way you AFK this is just by having the armor, the sword in the main hand, front flesh and off hand, hold down right click and then do F3 plus T then you release your right click button. Now this will automatically hold down whatever buttons you had down during that period with that symbol on the screen. Now your player will automatically eat even if you don't touch anything and then you can use alt tab to leave so I just switched over to my other account and now my guy will automatically eat whenever he needs to. Also make sure to face the player in a direction that he's not like opening trap doors or anything or right clicking into containers. Now because the player is hurting these drowns it's very similar to like the player hurting pigmen there's a chance that normal zombies can spawn from them because they're all part of the zombie family. 
So make sure your player is completely encased and safe because it might be a zombie that like spawns on top of this or spawns down there or spawns somewhere else trying to get to the player. This is part of the reinforcements that these guys have. If you want to, you can also have these guys drop down and then block this off and just kill them with your looting sword as they are far enough away from the spawning thing so they could pile up without preventing this from turning off. You can also place in a way for the player to exit, such as a door. If you do put in a door, make sure to put it in so that it is open to start with. But then when you do close it, you want it to be facing the other direction. A little trick you can do to make doors face the right direction, having the hinges from this side, is putting a block there. Then the game will find that as a spot that it will wind up put its hinge up against, and that way it will turn that direction now. I'll just remove those blocks, and now you got a way to go in without them being able to break that door down. Now when you build this up, you don't really have to use glass, I just use that so we can see them very easily. Obviously you'll be probably building this underground and you could just mine through any of the stone that's there. Because it's also underground, you will automatically have some protection from the skylight and that's what make it dark enough for them to spawn in. When the zombies spawn in from the spawner, there's a chance that they will try to walk towards that egg over there. And because of this, I had to move the player from Ave King on this side to Ave King on that side. Otherwise, they would try to sit here and fight against the water, and there is a chance that these guys can spawn in with Depth Strider, meaning they can actually walk against this water. But because the egg's over there, they will now walk this way and will fall into this water and get put into the system. Now, the speed of this farm is really based off of the spawner. Because we have one mob spawner, on average, this thing produces around 500 mobs per hour. That means we're going to get typically around 500 drowns. That equates to about 40 copper ingot per hour, which isn't a lot, but this is a very simple and somewhat early game farm. If you would like faster versions, check out the description. I will put some links to my other drown farms. And if there's any updates to my farms, I'll also be adding that to the description. If you enjoyed this simple farm, make sure to check out my playlist where I have all the new 1.17 farms as well as past version. And oftentimes I use a lot of cool and neat mechanics to make the farms as easy and simple and straightforward as possible. I had a lot of fun designing this farm and I do all my designing of different contraptions on my live stream. So make sure to check it out, link down below. You can see exactly how my mind works and the steps I take to go from an idea to an actual final product. And as always, don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as share this with others so they can take advantage of the new copper farm. I would like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.